Welcome to Motivated to Lead Podcast, helping you become a better leader. I'm your host, Mark Klingsein. Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us for our podcast this week. My name is Mark Klingsheim with SEMA Partners. Each week, we interview leaders and they share lessons learned from their careers. Our goal is to help you become a better leader. This week, we're happy to have join us uh, Dr. Karen Gordon. Uh, she is a leadership and relationship expert, and uh, she's written a new book that's actually coming out this week. It's entitled The Three Chairs, How Great Leaders Drive Communication, Performance, and Engagement. And uh, she shares some great insights that will help you in your career as well as in your personal life. Looking forward to today's conversation with Karen. And uh, it's great to have uh, Karen joining us uh, for our conversation today. And I guess, uh, first off, could you give us just a little bit of your story, a little bit of your uh, uh, career history? Sure. Thanks so much. So I've been doing this work for 25 years. I feel like a dinosaur. It's been a long time. Um, my doctorate's in marriage and family. So I just spent the first 10 years working with teenagers and millennials. So for everybody who has teenagers, uh, they are my favorite age group to work with. I love teenagers and worked at a medical center and I uh, started my first practice and did that for the first 10 years. And I became quite a millennial expert or teen expert here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And then I was encouraged by a lot of these big companies that were sponsoring my work nationally to transfer the knowledge I had from millennials into the workplace 15 years ago. So that's how I kind of started expanding our work. And so today we work with companies all around the world. I work mostly with senior leadership teams, uh, a lot of managers. And I found that if I could train managers successfully, they would have a much better um, attraction and retention rate with their with their millennial employees. Mm. So uh, my, I've got this little niche where I can actually speak to businesses, but I also speak to families. And I still practice with families, but 80% of my time now is working with management teams, uh, which has been extremely fun. Great. Well, one of the questions I love to, to ask uh, most every guest is if you were to go back, spend back time to uh, age 22, knowing what you know now, what, what advice would you give yourself? Oh boy, I would have gotten myself a mentor early. I got my first mentor when I was about 28, uh, which is a complete game changer. Um, my, all my training is in psychology. And so when I started being asked to transfer the knowledge into the workplace, I didn't have any business background. But what was interesting, when I went to Waterloo University, I had to take a bunch of business classes uh, for part of my co-op. And I actually did better in my business classes than I did in my psychology classes, which is kind of funny. Um, and so what I did when I was 27, 28 is I realized I needed to get myself a business mentor. Um, and so I did that and it was a game changer. So my 22 year old self, I would have said, get yourself a mentor as fast as you possibly can and really learn how to scale what you know to reach a wider audience. And I didn't really even learn a lot about that concept until probably my mid thirties. So so it's definitely been an evolution, but a super fun one. And, you know, just it, it, like for everybody with their career, right? It's sure. a lot of change and you look at in terms of different opportunities. So it's been an exciting journey. Well, you've got uh, a new book that's coming out and actually it's going to coincide with uh, just right, right before this uh, episode uh, comes out and I encourage everybody to pick up a copy of it. It's entitled The Three Chairs, How Do Great Leaders Drive Communication, Performance and Engagement? You've, you've said it already. You've... Uh, you're being featured in a number of uh, business magazines as well as is uh, having some good success with it. But uh, talk a little bit about just uh, what was kind of the reason for writing the book and, and uh, yeah. we'll jump right into it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we just hit three bestsellers on Amazon last week and then last week this week featured in Forbes Inc. and Entrepreneur. So we're off to a good start. And this is all the pre-orders. We haven't even we haven't even released the books. The book actually gets released October the 31st. So the three chairs is really a summary of everything I've done in my career. And I want everybody who is Mark, are you a visual learner out of curiosity? Are you a visual learner? Or yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Most of, I find about 70% of people actually are. So for all of us visual learners, I want you to visualize looking at a stage and seeing three chairs. And that's really the cover of the book. So if you can actually see it on Mark's podcast here, that is the cover right there. And so this is a concept I created uh, 24 years ago when I was working with teenagers and I noticed that a lot of them struggle with self-esteem. And so I started doing a lot of research on what is the power of self-esteem and attitude and how does that translate to decision-making? And I found a ton of research, but it was sitting on dusty shelves in university libraries. And so I thought, how do I take this, this data, this research and make it really um, powerful? And so I came up with this concept called the three chairs. And the idea is that I started with high schools and now I do it with businesses is that these three chairs are essentially the three attitudes of, that we all have. So if you look at a stage, you've got these three chairs, the left chair 
is the person who I would call the insecure person or the insecure leader. Um, so they are tough on themselves. They're critical. They're, they, they put themselves down, whether publicly or quietly. Then on the right chair, you've got the arrogant leader. They're cocky. They're arrogant. They're full of themselves. They will tell you what you, what, you know, they don't care how you feel at the end of it. They're just going right. to tell you, you know, what they want. And then you've got them, this middle chair leader, this middle chair mindset, what I call the confident leader. And this is a leader that they know a lot, but they don't know everything. They have a sense of humility. And so the whole notion around the book is helping people understand what chair are you sitting in and how does it affect your life? What chair are you sitting in? How does it affect how you lead, how you communicate, how you deal with stress, how you manage boundaries? Um, and the crazy thing is, Mark, I started teaching this concept to high schoolers. They picked it up. And then I started teaching it to kindergarten kids. So I actually teach the three chairs to five-year-olds all the way to Fortune 500 CEOs because this is not a teen topic. This is a human topic and leadership starts very young. And so, but it really does start with the mindset. And if we can understand the mindset that we have, it actually almost predicts based on science how we respond to different decisions. And so the book literally gives people goose pimples when they're, when they're reading it because now they understand okay, I see myself in the left chair. Now I understand why I deal with conflict this way. Now I understand why I'm cho I, I choose a partner because you can actually even choose, you can even based on the three chairs, you can actually predict how, uh, who, who people choose as their life partner, but also their business partner. It literally is crazy once actually people start kind of going through it. So if you're in that first chair, uh, yep. what are some practical things you can do to move uh, to that, that uh, middle chair? That middle chair. So one of, there's a lot of different ways and the book is filled with very, very, it's all research based, but it's extremely practical. And there's a workbook and team discussion questions to really kind of round it. Cause I really do feel that the power of this book is doing it in a group because when everybody can be learning together, insights start firing off and, and then you can start applying it. So if people really identify, so I was speaking at Royal Bank, for example, last week, and literally I'm looking at my audience of a thousand people and I'm and people are like at the edge of their seat because they can start seeing, oh my goodness, I'm sitting in the left chair. My spouse is sitting in the right chair. I've got a manager who's sitting in the middle chair. My, my son is sitting in the left. People kind of start kind of mapping it out. And so first question I get people to say is which chair are you sitting in the, the, uh, the majority of the time? Second question is how does it impact your life? And third question to your point is how do you sit in the middle chair? So if somebody is identifies as sitting in that left chair, they identify with that more insecure leader, which is by the, by the way, 70% of the population will identify with sitting in that left chair. One of the first things is to not personalize feedback because a lot of times people in that left chair, it is very hard for them to get feedback. They personalize it. So it makes it really difficult uh, if, you, if they're in your team or if they're a client or if they're a family member, because you feel like you can't give them any feedback because they personalize sure. and they kind of fall apart. And so the first thing I try to get people to do is don't personalize feedback, see it as data. So even if the data, if, even if the feedback is tough and it's hard to hear, try to uh, see it as, um, as feedback is a huge one. And then the second one is actually to set goals is actually one of the best ways to learn to sit in the middle chair goals that are important to the person. And so when I teach this to high schoolers, that's what I tell them. If you want to learn to sit in the middle chair, what are three things you really want to achieve and put pen to paper and kind of put the action plan. And because when we start taking initiative on things that are important to us, all of a sudden we become the driver in our own, in our own life. We're not this passenger that's kind of hanging out. And so that's why goal setting is an incredible way to learn to sit in the middle chair. And then the third tip I would tell people is identify people in your life, work and home that already sit in the middle chair. Who are they at work? Who are the middle chair folk? Who are the middle chair people in at home and pay it to, and spend time with them because it's like a language. If you spend time with people in the middle chair, you start learning how they deal with feedback how they set goals, how they take initiative, how they deal with conflict. And you can learn a ton by just being in the presence of other people who sit in the middle chair. So for those, uh, and you know who you are, <laughs> you're sitting <laughs> in that third chair. <laughs> Is there any hope? You know who you are. <laughs> yes, right. everyone's like, oh no, please don't say my name. Please don't say my name. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's the, that person you're thinking of. If, yeah. if you're thinking of somebody, it was probably yeah. you, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So is there, is there some steps that somebody realizes the light, light bulb goes on and you go, man, I, that's kind of how I've been leading uh, to, to move to that, you know, from the third chair to the second chair? Yeah, it's a great question, Mark. And I think when I speak about this and when I give keynotes on it and I watch my audience, 
you know, I'll say who can see where they're sitting and I'll see like 99 hands start going up. And, um, and the ones in the left chair are actually the most coachable because they, they know they don't feel great and they kind of, so there's a motivation. It's the right chair folks and leaders uh, that are the hardest to reach. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so you can't, and the thing is you can't make somebody sit in the middle chair. It's everybody, it's our own journey. We all have to learn how to sit in the middle chair ourselves, right? So that arrogant leader on the right hand, uh, the best way to, to respond to them is you want to actually be friendly, but distant, actually. You kind of, you know, we all, we're all going to have people in our life that are that right chair leader. And we, we're going to have them at work. We're going to have them at home. We're going to have them with their in-laws. We're going to have them with neighbors. So you have to kind of learn how to manage those kind of relationships. And so the strategy is be friendly, but distant, but also learn how to stay, hold your ground because it's that arrogant leader that will be a, quite a bit of a bully and they will try to push and they will attract the left chair. So the right chair and the left chair leaders are often attracted to each other in both business partners, as well as in spous- spousal relationships, that middle chair leader, they learn how to hold their ground and challenge in a respectful way, that right chair leader um, to try to kind of get their buy-in. And so it's an art and a science. And I, I give a lot of examples in the book, of kind of how do you practically kind of do that? So a lot of our, our listeners are uh, new or uh, maybe new CEOs, they, or maybe have moved into a leadership role. Uh, what are some practical ways to uh, figure out you've inherited a team? Typically, uh, you've come in and you're now leading this team. Uh, what are some ways to figure out kind of what your makeup of your team is? And, and uh, are there some practical things people can do besides get the book and go through Yeah, the no, it's great. Um, I would actually, I recommend, uh, I actually recommend the book, but not just my book. My book is one, is one piece of the puzzle, right? It's like all, a lot of leadership, right? Um, I recommend Patrick Lencioni's book too, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that because that talks about the team dynamics. My book is more on the individual leader. And so, you know, I was asked, somebody was asking me uh, just last week in terms of what are three books that I'd be recommending. And if I was to kind of put together a kit that I think would kind of kind of fit all the pieces, I would recommend traction for entrepreneurs and actually building in terms of overall um, kind of the strategy of mm-hmm. business. I would recommend Patrick Lencioni's book, The Five Dysfunctions, about the team. And I'd recommend my book in terms of developing the actual individual leader. If you kind of put those three books as almost a kit, they almost kind of round it off because they all kind of focus on different things. I think when you inherit a team or you inherit a business, it's you're going to have a makeup of all those three different chairs. And what's great about um, what's great, what's great, great about my book is it kind of helps people to kind of take a step back and you can kind of start seeing where people are at. You can certainly have a wonderful understanding about yourself, but then you kind of understand now, why do people do certain things? Why do people not, why do people avoid conflict? Right? Why do people, uh, are afraid to take risks? Why are people not putting up their hand for actually promotion? Well, a lot of it is because they're sitting in that left chair. And so when we can kind of have that step back and we're like, okay, now I understand why they do that. So here's the approach that I have to have to try to kind of get their buy-in. It really is quite empowering. And then uh, the strategy really is, okay, how can we build a team? How can we build a team that we're all in the middle chair? Right? One of the companies in, um, that I was working with in Wisconsin, when the two CEOs heard this, he goes, Karen, he goes, this, there, this two, two gentlemen, they're like, this makes total sense. We want to make our company in the middle chair. We want all of our teams to get in the middle chair. We want our managers to get in the middle chair. So we're going to get the book for everybody. So this is going to become almost like the language. And, um, and it just helps, it helps create a uniform of language, right? In terms of when we're talking about culture, uh, you want to have something that's easy for people to kind of understand. And so that's why the visual is actually really helpful. So you, this applies not only in our work life, but you, you talk about your background in, in marriage and family. Uh, yeah. How would you apply this as a, as a parent? Because I've got mm-hmm. three, three kids and they're okay. all wired differently. And yes. uh, how would you approach that in a, in a family, family setting? Yeah, it's great. And Mark, how old are your children? They're all grown. And I, okay. now I have the next generation of grandkids. Experience. So, yeah, all right. so that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So yes, uh, this is the, this is why I love this topic is that, you know, when I teach it 
to business leaders, so many of them are like, oh, this is so great. I can actually teach this to my kids. And absolutely. So the first step is to read the book so that the leaders can actually understand the concept. The second step is now to teach to your kids. And actually, the book is very easy. I actually, we have high schools uh, that are actually starting to buy it for grade 11 hmm. and older. We have universities that are starting to buy it for their business classes because uh, you, want, you want people to be learning these skills early, right? You don't want to be waiting until they're, you know, in their 30s. So the, how it applies to parents is I've got twin boys who are 14. I taught them the four, I taught, I taught them the three chairs when they were in the third grade. I'd come back from a, an event and it was for, for kids. And I thought, they said, mom, what were you doing? And I said, well, I was speaking at this conference. They were like, well, what were you speaking about? And I thought, you know what, this is, the, this is the right time. So I got three chairs from my living room out of the kitchen and I put them in my living room and I put them in front of them. And I said, I want you, I'm going to teach you with what I do for my job. And I, and I explained them the three chairs and then I said, okay, now which chair do you think you're sitting in? And they were able to identify it, Mark, very quickly. I'm sitting in this chair. And then what's interesting with children, and you will see this with leaders too, is they'll see themselves sitting in different chairs for different things. Mm -hmm. So they might say, academically, I sit in the middle chair. With my friends, I'm sitting more in the left chair. Or with my goal setting, I'm sitting like, you know, it, kids will do that. Kids will kind of like uh, piece it apart. And so it's a great question of where are you sitting? Where are your friends sitting? And you keep it a confidential conversation because- sure. Generally speaking, people are attracted to those that are sitting in the middle, like the same chair. Hmm. So middle chair children will be attracted unconsciously, subconsciously to other people in the middle chair. And then left chair is often attracted to the right chair. So it, you, all you have to do is visually put it in front of kids, explain it, and they start actually picking up. And then they have an awareness of what do you need to do to help yourself move in the middle chair? Who are the people in your life you need to surround yourself who are in the middle chair? And also you've got a very simple framework to really teach self, self-esteem confidence, but leadership. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. So what outside of work, what do you do to, to recharge? Well, I do lots of, I love, uh, we're a very active family being a mom of twin boys. I've never been more active in my entire life. <laughs> Sure. Mountain biking and rock climbing and paddle boarding. I'm a big paddler. We love tennis as a family. We're a big skiing family. So lots of adventure, lots of sports. And then I actually love interior design. That's my, my other really big hobby. And so okay. if, I'm, if I'm not doing my regular job, um, we're renovating apartments. And, uh, and not, we don't flip them, but we, we love to decorate. We love to renovate. It's a, quite a joy. There's a creative outlet for me. Um, and so I, I really do love the, it's great to work, but it's great to have things that are outside of work. It just kind of helps with the brain um, and, uh, and seeing that uh, different kind of transformation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how would somebody learn out, learn more about uh, your work and what you, uh, what you do? Thanks so much. Yeah, the best is to go to my website. Uh, so it's www.dkleadership. Obviously, it stands for Dr. Karen. So dkleadership.org. O R G and in Canada. Um, so I'm Canadian. You probably, some of you would probably have heard my Canadian accent. Uh, but most of my work actually is in the States. And so, sure. uh, and one of my U S clients, they were like, you know, Karen, we don't really have .org in the States. Is that true, Mark? You don't, it's not very popular. Is that well, right? For nonprofits it is, but oh, yeah. for nonprofits. Okay. In Canada, it's very popular. So so it is dkleadership.org. So we've got lots of free giveaways um, at our website. Uh, so those are free re uh, resources for, uh, for families as well as organizations. And it's all focused on leadership and emotional intelligence. That's our niche, but extremely practical so that people can uh, learn it, apply it, and see, and see change. Well, I wish you success with uh, the new book. I encourage everybody to pick up a copy and uh, use it not only at work, but in your own families and appreciate uh, uh, all uh, your time and, and insights today. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mark. Thank you for listening to the Motivated to Lead podcast. Please subscribe on iTunes. You can also see a video version of this interview at motivatedtolead.com. This podcast is brought to you by SEMA Partners, helping you find your next great leader.